Hi there, uh, welcome to the Faculty of Science at Monash University. My name is Richard Rayner and I'm going to present a short video to you to help you through this process of enrolling in the units in your first year. Um, it won't take very long, but I'm going to touch on some important points that you need to understand. First of all, when you enrol in a Bachelor of Science, in your first year, if you're enrolled full time, you'll typically take eight units. Now in this video, we're going to show them as either being science units or as free elective units. And I'll explain a little bit more about what free electives are a little bit later on. When I say unit, what I mean is basically one semester's worth of study. You might think of that as a subject. Usually our units are worth six credit points. Some of them are worth more, but the great majority are six. And that means that we would normally talk about you taking as a full-time load, if you're doing four units, that would be 24 credit points. You might make up that 24 credit points in some other ways if you're doing units that are worth more than six credit points. But for most people and for most units, it's four units each semester is equivalent to a full-time load. Over the course of a year, then, you would do four units in semester one and four units in semester two. Um, and that makes up your full-time allocation. If you're studying part-time, of course, the number of units will be lower, and that will have an impact then on how many units you complete each year and how many years you take to complete your course. If you're full-time, after the end of three years, this is sort of what your course will look like. You'll have completed a range of science units from year one to two to three, um, and a number of free electives, as I'll explain in a moment. One other thing you might notice is that I've named here a couple of units as a maths and statistics unit and also a unit that's coded Psi 1000. That unit is about science communication. Now we have a requirement as a core to the Bachelor of Science that students undertake a mathematics or statistics unit and this Psi 1000 unit in their first year. But as I've indicated by the arrows, they can be done in any order. Um, doesn't matter which one you do in semester two and which in semester one. As part of your Bachelor of Science, you need to complete a major. And this is a major recognised by the Faculty of Science. Um, and you'll find them all listed in the handbook. But a major is what you would consider being your area of specialisation. And over the course of three years, you'll take two units, or typically 12 credit points at level one. That's usually your first year, but the level refers to the level of the unit rather than the year in which you study it. And then in your second and third years, you'll do a total of 36 credit points. And these comprise then the major for a total of eight units altogether. We also have the option for you to do minors. They're not required, but a minor is four credit, uh, sorry, four units. And so therefore a total of 24 credit points. You'll do two in your first year and then select two in your second or third year to make that minor. We have a very large number of majors. We also have a couple of extended majors and minors that you can take through the Faculty of Science. And you'll see them listed here on the screen. You can think of the major as being what you would describe as your area of specialisation when you've finished your course. And thinking about what professional skills you want to have when you finish university and go and seek employment. Do you want to be able to consider yourself a geneticist, for example, or an environmental scientist, or an immunolo immunologist, and so on? With those areas of study or those, those majors that you see listed there, some are taught within the Faculty of Science and some are taught by other faculties, particularly Faculty of Medicine, Nursing and, Nursing and Health Sciences, but they are recognised as science majors. We do have a couple that are extended majors and those require a larger number of credit points that you need to complete. They're described in the handbook and then there are a couple only available as minors. Again, your, the handbook is your source of information to ensure you make the right selections. I want to say a little bit about selection of units and sequences. Now you might see on the score, you will see on the screen here that uh, individual units have a code. And the code tells you a few things about that unit. The first three letters refer to the discipline area. So in the case of EAE 1011, the EAE refers to Earth, Atmosphere and Environment whereas the bio code refers to biology. The next number, or the first number, is the year level at which it's taught. So in this case, these are level one units that you would typically take in your first year. 
and then the other digits there are the unique code that identifies that unit. You'll see that the EAE 1011 and 1022 form a sequence. So a sequence is a pair of first year units that follow from each other in an area of specialization leading to a major in that area. And in your course, you must complete two of these. Now, not all first year units can form sequences. So it is important that you check carefully. The majority of them do, but there are some selections you can make where first year units can't pair up and be called a sequence. And sequences must be unique. You can't use the same unit in two different sequences. Again, you have the maths and statistics requirement and the science communication requirement, and then you have some free electives. So your first year might look something like this. In semester one, you complete two science units, you complete the mathematics and statistics unit, and you do a free elective. And in semester two, you do the same, but you do the science communication unit. But remember, as I mentioned, those can be done in either order. If you're starting mid-year, the structure is the same, but of course you start with your semester two units. That also means that when it comes to these unit sequences or pairs, you will do them in reverse order. Now that will mean that there are some sequences that you can't do because the semester two unit has the semester one unit as a prerequisite. So be aware of that when you make these selections. It may limit your choice slightly, but generally speaking, you will finish off your first year requirements at the, in the semester one of the following year after the, after the year that you start. Um, now I mentioned the mathematics and statistics core unit and the science communication core unit, which can be done in either of the semesters as I've indicated. The mathematics and statistics core unit is a requirement to the Bachelor of Science and every student completing the Bachelor of Science must meet this requirement. However, you do have quite a range of choices on which mathematics or statistics units unit you select and the choices are listed there. Um, some of them are mathematical and some are more statistical in nature. It's important that you look at the handbook and select that mathematics core unit based on first of all your level of experience with mathematics and by that I mean the level of mathematics and the achievement of mathematics in your VCE. Um, but it should also be uh, an indication of where you expect to specialise. For example, if you are planning to continue in biology or biomedical sciences and do one of those majors, then it's most likely that the statistical methods for science unit is most appropriate to you because those statistics, statistical understanding is more useful within the biology than say some of the other mathematics units. Um, conversely, if you're planning to do a major in physics and astronomy, for example, or astrophysics, then the, the, the mathematics units will be a requirement for your level two units. So make sure you select those based on your background, the level of interest you have and which direction you plan to go, and what will meet the requirements for the level two units that you need in your major. So that overall then you will have this unit, these units selected in your first year, forming part of the core requirement for, the, for your Bachelor of Science, and then you continue into your second year from them. Let me say a little bit about free electives. So within a Bachelor of Science, you can take up to 48 credit points of free electives. Now free elective can be a unit from within the, the uh, Faculty of Science that's not forming part of your major, or it can be a unit from another faculty. And um, there's a very, very wide range of units you can select from around the university that you can take as free electives. Now, some of them you won't be able to take because they are limited to students who might be enrolled in a particular course, for example, pharmacy units, or they may have um, level one requirements or prerequisites in order to take as a level two unit. So you'll need to check the handbook to ensure you're eligible to take those free electives before you select them. Nevertheless, you get a lot of choice and flexibility. If you wanted to study some economics, for example, or some art history, or some elements of IT, for, for, uh, say, that you would take as electives, then you'll be able to do that within a Bachelor of Science. So ultimately, at the end of the three years, your Bachelor of Science will look something like this. With a large number of science units, the mathematics and statistics and science communication core completed, and then a range of free electives, which might be science units or they might be non-science units. So to complete your enrolment and get started with the next semester, 
Enrol in your core units, make your decision about which semester you want to do each of them in and think carefully about the mathematics and statistics core unit that you select. Select the units that are going to form the sequences leading to majors. Have a think about the major, you don't have to make that decision now, but you can make your decision whether it's going to be a chemistry major or a genetics major or whatever it might be. You can make that decision next year. There's no rush right now, but you can select that range of level one sequences that keep your options open. And then you have the free electives, whether they are science electives or they are non-science electives. And those will make up your full-time load for the first year. If you're ever unsure what to do, you can look at the handbook. And um, if you want to get course advice, then get in touch with Monash Connect and request course advice, and they will have a look at your course selections for you and ensure that you are meeting the requirements and not making selections that are incompatible with the Bachelor of Science. That's it from me. I hope you learned something useful. Good luck with your Bachelor of Science. We look forward to seeing you on campus. Bye.